I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we are taking a look at an enchanting story. It is called Henry the Hoglet of Sunbury Farm. It is written by Valerie Walker. It is set in Wales in the idyllic countryside. And this delightful story captures the essence of adventure through the eyes of Headley, a curious young hedgehog. And we will explore his mischievous escapades and heartwarming journeys that bring joy and lessons to young readers alike. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. We ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her delightful book. The links are below this interview. Valerie, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Lovely to be here. Now, how did you become a hedgehog expert? Well, as a child uh, in London, England, during the war, I spent some time in the country to get away from the bombing. My parents didn't want me evacuated, but they did let me go to the country with uh, friends. And my I called her Auntie Dolly. She wasn't. But she said, if you put out milk, hedgehogs will come. And sure enough, they did. Um, and I was fascinated with them. And there was a little boy who was also there on holiday from Wales. Mm -hmm. His name was Headley. Mm -hmm. And he and I would make little box make homes for the hedgehogs out of apple boxes. We'd put them in, of course, they'd escape, but we did it every night thinking we were making homes for them. So years later, when I started writing, my husband said, you should write a children's book. And I thought, well, I'll write about hedgehogs because that was a time, a lovely time in my growing up. And I was fascinated with them. And so I did a little research. I didn't need much because I knew pretty quite a bit and the very first story was the adventures of Headley the hedgehog which um is now was out of print but has since been reprinted uh, as a soft copy mm -hmm. and after I finished doing the whole series and went on to other things I thought I have to go back and tell the story of the birth of Headley so that's what mm -hmm. this is about Headley's birth growing up with his brothers being taught by the mother how to how to hunt and how to evade predators and so on. So that's how it all came about. That's such a great story. Um, you know that I'm glad I asked the question. How do you escape the war and then you went to a rural area and you were exposed to uh, hedgehogs and the little boy named Headley. All wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I'm glad you remembered it years later to put it down in the series of books. So this book is actually like a prequel to the whole series, right? Exactly. Wonderful. Written many years later. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. What do you hope children learn from Headley? Well, of course, the importance of friendship and family uh, is very much uh, in my mind when I was right. Well, I, I suppose I could say that was the main reason was friendship. But um, Headley's sense of adventure, and, and I'd like to see children have more of that, to get out in nature and explore be curious like Headley is mm. and ask lots of questions because, you know, we live in a wonderful place. And if we don't ask questions, we will never going to have the answers. So and nature, I find being out in nature, smelling the flowers, listening to the birds, watching things grow. I'm a keen gardener. Mm -hmm. um, that's my happy place. And I'd like to see children do that because they spend too much time on their computers, their telephones and everything else. And they need to get outside and in the fresh air and explore and be curious. <laughs> exactly. I remember just being a kid and screaming to my mom, hey, mom, I'm going to go out and play. And that's all I would say. And then I roamed around the neighborhood. I went through the woods. I met up with friends and uh, all of this stuff has gone away. You know, child, parents don't feel like it's safe to let their children go out and play. Um, you know, it has to be a play date. It has to be organized. It has to be arranged. It has to be structured. But I think children learn best when it's not organized, arranged, and structured. Don't you think? Yes. They they need to use their wonderful imaginations. Yeah. Um, and, and not have everything told to them or play games that are, are again, all instructed for them. Tell them what to do. They have to be able to think for themselves and have fun. 
um, like just just walking around the neighborhood, you know, look around and suddenly you'll notice a different bird you hadn't seen before or a flower and, and ask, you know, what is that? Right. Or a hedgehog. <laughs> or a hedgehog. <laughs> but unfortunately, we don't have hedgehogs in North America. Right. But uh, for the kids who are watching in the UK, there are hedgehogs there, so they could uh, possibly see them there. Yes. What's yeah. it like been like writing Headley's journey over all the course of all these books? Oh, well, it's been delightful, really, because it's given me a chance to um, express my feelings and uh, see the delight I, you know, on kids' faces. I actually did have a pet hedgehog for a short time and I would take him to schools and they absolutely loved him. And uh, I would read part of the story and then let them ask questions. And then they had wonderful questions mm -hmm. and showed a real interest. And then I have, um, I've been a presenter at uh, schools for kids, the uh, Young Writers Conference. And I was amazed at how wonderful some of their writing was. The keen, the keen students were really mind blowing how good they could be. There were a few in there that were there because their mum said they had to go. But right. <laughs> uh, other than uh, generally speaking, I would say the young people I saw at schools were wonderful. I was yeah. very happy to see. Well, especially they, when you have a great visual aid like that, a real life hedgehog with you, right? Yes, it's it amazing. did help. Are they yeah. friendly? Can you hold them? Can you pet them? Um, they're very prickly, very spiky. Mm. But the very first hedgehog I had was purely, I had no intention of it. My niece said, oh, Auntie Val, she said, a friend of mine has a hedgehog. She doesn't want it anymore. And I've said, you'll take it because you love hedgehogs. Mm. So that's how I acquired a hedgehog and he was so friendly he would never curl up and so you could stroke him and he was he would crawl all over you and let you pet him and the kids just thought that was wonderful wow. um, and hedgehogs do have uh they're very clever at escaping um uh, and they my little hedgehog ended up in the weirdest places and we'd search all over for him uh and he actually, one time, we had him uh, on a balcony with a fence around him and he fell off and we couldn't find him for 12 days. And then he just came back as if nothing had happened, <laughs> rolled into his little house, curled up in his little toque, which he slept in, and uh, just carried on as if nothing had happened. Amazing. Yeah, we're worried about them. For them, it's, you know... Animal nature, just going well, out, Well, yes, he around. found, he was able to find food and water and came Amazing. back when he was ready. <laughs> That's wonderful. Have you envisioned Headley the Hedgehog as a series, perhaps, of, of cartoons or even live action? Um, I'm not fussy about cartoons, I must admit. Um, there is, you know, the book, I have done the, the three, four in the series, and then there was a a uh, short story coloring, two short story coloring books about Headley. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never thought about cartoons. Yeah. Uh, not it into today's cartoons, let's put it that way. I find them not my idea. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, this would follow your script, your book, your vision. So hopefully somebody out there who has a uh, similar vision to yours comes upon your book and... Uh, thinks about creating it into a series because I think it would be wonderful. I think kids would really love it because I think there's not much information out there about hedgehogs. True. So, uh, and then all the other stories, adventures, and uh, correlations that you make within the pages as well. Or, yes. I know you're a pretty prolific writer. What are you working on these days? I am actually writing on a new book. Um, it isn't about hedgehogs per se, but it is. Um, it's set today and it is about the children in the stories, uh, the descendants of the children in the stories, because the first book was in, you know, in the twenties. So we're now in today's, and it's um, it's got a lot of magic and not mystery, but a lot of magic in in it and exploring. And I won't say too much because <laughs> I haven't quite finished it. <laughs> Sounds great. Do you have a working title yet? No, I've been struggling, but it's got to do something with summer solstice. So that's going okay. to be in there somewhere. Sounds great. My favorite time of year, the summer solstice. We're getting close. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. 
Well, the name of the book we've been talking about today is called Headley, the Hoglet of Sunbury Farm. It's written by Valerie Walker. It's the prequel to a series of books about Headley, the uh, hedgehog. And it is an amazing story of a curious young animal and all of the mischievous adventures that he gets into. It's a book that you'll love, your children will love, and you'll want to get every book in this series. Valerie, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Appreciate your time. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.